Let's go ahead and start talking about limiting reactants. Limiting reactants are essentially the thing that runs out. Okay? When we talk about reactants, uh, the terminology that we tend to use in chemistry is that reactants get consumed. Okay? They get used up. If you have more than one thing that are coming together, well, mo most likely they're not both going to run out. You'll have a little bit more of one and a little bit less of the other. So we pay special attention to the limiting reactant because that should be the thing that we focus on. One thing that uh, the AP, the, the college board group, what they like to do is they take advantage of the Haber process. The Haber process is essentially a, a production of ammonia. And what it is, is uh, ammonia is one of our, our key ingredients in fertilizers. And as a nation, we care a lot about fertilizer. So heads up, uh, we're going to talk about this process of, of making ammonia. And I'm going to look through this next example to help you understand this idea of what a limiting reagent is. So if you take a look at our particle use, notice that we have our overall reaction, nitrogen and hydrogen come together in a one to three ratio. And when they do, they're going to form two ammonia particles. But what we have to have is exactly one nitrogen and exactly three hydrogen to make two ammonia. When you look at your groupings, see how we've already kind of outlined each of these potential groupings. And notice that we have exactly five groupings of those starting reactants, and they make exactly five groupings of the ammonia as a product. In our second situation, though, what we see is we don't actually have a perfectly even match. We're not going to run out of both things. As you take a look at it, you'll notice that when we start matching these up, we can only make three matches, three groups, according to that chemical equation. What's left over are these nitrogen atoms here and here. So when we get our reactions, those nitrogens, they're left over. They're still there. And we call those excess reagents. So it's important that we understand the idea, uh, the definitions. A limiting reagent or a limiting reactant, those are two ways of saying the same thing, is the thing that runs out. And the excess reagent or excess reactant is what is left over. If you try to look at this in a quantitative way, we can see that we began with five molecules of nitrogen in the beginning of our reaction. Three of those molecules are consumed. And in the process, two of them are left over in the end. So we would say there are two molecules of nitrogen that are excess. You know that you're dealing with a limiting reactant situation whenever you're given two starting amounts. So what you have to think, like there's, there's a specific kind of a thought process here. Um, we know just from before, we look at the chart. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to break it up, start with those amounts, have that balanced equation, have molar masses together, all of those same things. But what we're going to do now is we're going to find moles of two things, not just one. The reason that this gets a little more complicated is you really have to think through the process to figure out, well, what's the thing that I have and what's the thing that, that, um, that I need? How much of one thing would it take to get rid of one thing? So what, what I really want you to do with these is just imagine that you only have one of those two starting amounts. Ask yourself, well, what, what if all of these moles reacted? What would that require from the other side? And how much of the product could that make? How many moles of the other reactants do I need in order to use it all up? And once again, how much can I make? So you do your calculations, you get a number, and then when you have that number, you'll have to compare it to the given amount of that other substance. So in, in abstract terms, it takes a little bit to, to understand this. I think it really helps just to see this in action. So Let's just say, this is our, our starting problem, we have 25 kilograms of nitrogen reacting with 5 kilograms of hydrogen. We're going to make ammonia, and we have a couple key questions. The first is, 
what mass of ammonia can be produced? Which reactant is the limiting reactant and what is the mass of the reactant that is in excess? So I started right here. Notice that it's the second question presented, but it actually makes more sense to answer this question first. Which reactant is the limiting reactant? We're gonna go ahead and write out, we know the chemical equation because we already saw that, but we could balance it. We're gonna write the molar masses out though. 28.02 for nitrogen, 2.02 for hydrogen, and 17.04 on our ammonia. Now that I have those values, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write out the amounts that are given. Well, our balanced equation is shown. Here are our given amounts. It states that we have 25 kilograms of nitrogen. So very quickly, if, if you recall, that kilo prefix means 10 to the third power grams. So 25 kilograms, let's make this one. 25 kilograms can be multiplied by 1,000 grams in one kilogram. And that's how we do this quick conversion, okay? We'll do the same thing when we're talking about our hydrogen. It's going to be, once again, 5 kilograms times 1,000 grams per kilogram. We get to 5,000 grams there. As a secondary step, we want to make sure that we convert to moles. Remember, you're going to start with mass. You're going to divide by the molar mass, and that's what leads us into our mole value. Do the same thing with the hydrogen, and we find we have 892 moles of nitrogen in this 25 kilogram sample. We have 2,475 moles in 5,000 grams of hydrogen. So at this point, what we have to do is we've got to figure out, well, how much is required if I, if I were to cover one of these up, how much is required to fully react? Well, if I look at hydrogen as a starting point, my 5,000 grams, that's 2,475 moles. Well, beginning there, we're going to say 2,475 moles. We know that I need three moles of hydrogen gas to react with one mole of nitrogen. So if I take that 2,475, multiply by one, divide by three, my moles cancel, and that's when I get 825 moles of the nitrogen that are required in order to fully react away the hydrogen, okay? At this point, we just take a look at that. Well, 825 is required. If 825 is required, we've got to look at how much we actually do have. 825 is what we need. 892 is what we have. Well, I have 825 moles. I've got more than 825. So that means that the nitrogen is in excess. Now, you don't have to start necessarily with hydrogen. You could have started with nitrogen. It doesn't actually make a difference. Let's just say, okay, if we were starting with nitrogen instead. Well, beginning with nitrogen, I have 892 moles of nitrogen. And if we think about that same relationship, we want to cancel moles of nitrogen. So one mole of nitrogen goes on bottom and our three moles of hydrogen would now go on top. Well, if I multiply 892 by three, we find that we, need, we have 2,676 moles of hydrogen are required to react away all of my nitrogen. Now compare that. I need 2,676, that's the required amount. I have 2,475. I don't have enough. There's not enough hydrogen to react away all the nitrogen. So that tells me that hydrogen is going to run out. Hydrogen is limiting. I have excess hydrogen. I, have, <laughs> I do not have enough hydrogen, and I have an excess of nitrogen. Okay. So now, now that we understand what the limiting is, we can take a look at the next question. What's the mass of ammonia that can be produced? It doesn't help me to look at the excess reactant because 
we know that we're, we're not going to run out of that thing. It can't completely be consumed and make products. So we're only going to focus on that limiting reactant. So I'm going to make note that my limiting reactant is the hydrogen. And our goal now is to figure out, once again, how much product can be made. If you think about this one, kind of logically, from the beginning, we would say the grams of hydrogen, the limiting thing, have to be converted into moles of hydrogen, the limiting. The moles of hydrogen can then be converted with a mole ratio to find our moles of ammonia, the product that we're after. But the question is asking, what is the mass of ammonia? So we would do one final conversion step to find grams of ammonia. Now, by using the table, we can organize those conversions. And we've already done a couple of the steps, so we can take advantage of that. What we've got to do at this point is we have to take our 2,475 moles of hydrogen and convert that into moles of ammonia. So I'll do that. 2,475 divided by 3 moles of hydrogen and multiply by 2 moles of ammonia. I get, once again, 1,650 moles. And now that I have moles, I should multiply by molar mass in order to get grams of ammonia. I find that I get 28,116 grams. And because we have to pay attention to our starting measurements, notice we're given 5.00 kilograms, three significant digits of hydrogen. So I have to round that to three significant digits. And it's a good idea to go back to the starting unit. We did that here by dividing away the 1,000. So I converted from grams back to kilograms. The next thing that we want to deal with is this final question. What is the mass of the reactant that is in excess? So we've got to think back to this. Remember that we said hydrogen is limiting, so nitrogen is my excess. I have 25 kilograms, but I'm not going to use all 25 kilograms. We've already worked this out. We calculated that the required amount of nitrogen was 825 moles of nitrogen to react away all the hydrogen. So if I start with 825 moles, I can do a quick conversion, take my 825 moles of nitrogen, we'll use molar mass to go back to grams. So one mole of nitrogen was 28.02 grams of nitrogen. By multiplying those together, we find that we get 23,116 grams of nitrogen that got used up in the reaction if I'm trying to determine how much is left over, I take the starting amount, my 25,000 grams, subtract away the used amount, and what I end up with is the leftover. 1,884 grams of nitrogen is excess, is left over when it's all said and done. So, since we again want to pay attention to sig figs, three sig figs in that starting nitrogen value, well, we get 1.88 kilograms of nitrogen as our excess. And again, I jump back to kilograms because that's the unit that we started in. So I'll let you practice this exercise. I'll go into this video in a little bit. But let's wrap this up by talking about reaction yields. The theoretical yield is the amount of product that would be formed if the limiting reactant is completely consumed, if the entire thing reacts away. And there are a couple things to, to point out here. This is a calculated amount because reality never ever gets us 100% of this thing reacting. The theoretical yield is if all of it reacted and it's assuming that we have perfect conditions, everything is exactly right. And reality doesn't work that way. It's not gonna be perfectly right. So what we have in reality is the actual yield. Now, the actual yield, we get this from an experimental value. What we're going to do is we're going to measure some quantifiable product of the reaction. We'll find the mass. We'll find the volume of a gas formed. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to work this out specifically so that we can compare it to the theoretical yield. The formula that we can use to compare these two, 
gets us a percentage, a percentage yield. What percent of the theoretical amount actually comes out? So we will take an actual yield value, divide by the theoretical yield, and then multiply by 100 to turn that fraction into a percentage. Guys, thanks for hanging in there through this, and uh, we'll go ahead and work more on some of these examples and exercises.